What's good, everybody? This is the host of the DVL Podcast, Rock Solid. Today is going to be our season finale on this podcast, on this relationship topic. Today's topic is going to be on a thin line between love and hate. But before we do, I hope everybody had a chance to enjoy their Mother's Day. Hope you ladies got everything that you wanted. Hope you fellas went all the way out the way to make things exquisite or whatever it is that's required to make that woman in your life, the people in your life happy and to do the things that need to be done for them. Um, had a chance to spend time with family, which is always, you know, great. Um, my sisters and aunts and you know, just having my kids and just people close to me, um, near me. I don't get to do it a lot. So when I get the chance, I try to take advantage of it. And then, of course, you know, somebody always got to do something stupid. But, you know, it didn't take away from the day. But the fact that that was the way it ended, you know, it sucked. But, hey, here we are, right? But let's not waste any more time. Like I said, season finale. We've done an awesome job this season. And everybody has tuned in. People have shared. We've grown way more than the first time I picked up this mic four months ago and was nervous as hell trying to get everything out and make sure it came out the way that I wanted to come out. But this episode is called A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. And if you look at the history of the episodes that we've done so far, it you could tell you should be able to tell that it was leading, leading up to something like this. When you're talking about healthy relationship, insecurities in relationship, sacrifices and things like that, it comes to that title of a thin line between love and hate. And by now we've all seen the movie, right? And if you've seen the movie, you already know that playing games with a person's heart can end up damn near deadly. I mean, that line is so thin that hell, they even made a song about it. So let's just be mindful of it and let's dive right in. You know, there is truly truly a very and uh, you know optim's razor thin line between love and hate this is the phrase that has a lot of different meanings you know between loving someone and hating them so much that the line becomes unclear sometimes you know life experience has taught us that in a thin line between love and hate many people have experienced you know what is called a love hate type of relationship you know and this is when your feelings for each other are so complicated and often extreme, you know, and the more you love a person, the more we're, we're equally capable of hating them after an experience of, say, betrayal or the end of a relationship. Look, love and hate both have very, very powerful meanings to them, you know, and perhaps, you know, the reason you love and hatred are so closely connected is that these two emotions have so many of the same type of components to them. You know, when it comes to expressing them, you know, everything it takes to love someone, it takes that same energy to also hate them. You have to go out your way. You have to dig deep. You have to be willing to let go of what you know to allow that person to get to a point where you hate them. Because this is a person that a day ago you love, now you hate. You know, that same passion that can that can give you someone can also be just as intense when it comes to hating them. You know, when you're feeling, you know, when you're feeling this type of high and emotions like love or hate, it can be a huge problem to, you know, to be objective, you know, about, about, about a relationship. And most emotions can take over your life. If you love hard enough for the other person, you might find yourself in a situation where you've never, you know, you've never been or accepting things that you've never accepted before. Or if you hate a person strongly enough, you know, it doesn't matter what they do for you. The feeling isn't going to go away easily. If your relationship ends, it's going to be difficult to, you know, to just simply just shrug it off or, you know, shoulder it away as if it never existed. Because once you start getting these emotions involved, it starts to become entangled. You know, you know, you can't just say, oh, well, you know, it didn't work out. No big deal. That's that sounds easy for someone that's not in your shoes to say. But when you're living that, it's not that easy. Sometimes you start to make sacrifices. Sometimes you start to do. You know, you start to improvise, you start doing things that you normally wouldn't do. You know, you're probably going to have these strong emotional reactions to that type of loss. But, you know, these th- but things like this is about, you know, it's both, you know, the good thing about emotions is that when it comes to love and hate, 
you know, these type of things are directed, they're usually directed at someone. And when they get directed at, at someone, you know, while emotions can be, you know, directed at someone, you know, or objects can be thrown or situation, love and hate as a relationship are directly straight at the other person. You know, because when you're laser focused on someone close to you, you tend to expect your feelings to be, you know, for them to be uh, reciprocated. And no one else can satisfy that type of desire. When you are singularly focused on one person, you don't have kids or you don't have, you know, the type of job that requires a lot of attention from you and stuff like that. You get singularly focused on a person. You're really already on that borderline of love and hate. This is why being in a relationship, it is so important to not lose yourself and finding other things to do to occupy you because it, it's not so much that it, it softens the landing, but it allows you a chance to process things differently than going strictly from love directly into hate. You know what I'm saying? So when they don't care for you the way you care for them, your disappointment can quickly turn into hate. You know, in the drop of a dime, you can be like in a full-fledged mental war. And this is when it can get scary. This is when they can get, you can get really close to that line, if not going over that line. And sometimes it becomes physical. You know what I'm saying? You must understand that every person isn't born with the mental emergency break to stop themselves. Because once you get to that point where a person, and you know, and I'm going to call it what it is, you can call it an excuse, right? Or a reason. But when it's all, when it's all said and done, that there's nothing that no one should be able to do to you or control you to push you to that point. Listen, you can express yourself. You can be angry. You can be upset. But get you to the point where you have to become physical. You put not only your freedom at hand, but you also put your life at risk. Because, again, everybody doesn't have the mental capacity to just stop when you stop. There's an old saying, if you hit me first, who are you to tell me how hard and how many times I can hit you back. So you have to be very careful and you have to have a lot of self-control. You have to be able to direct yourself in a manner that keeps things in line with your core value of who you are. You know, love and hate are different, you know, from the weaker emotion. You know, if you have passionate feelings for one another, you know, you likely won't show it through touch. Hate can be the same way. You know, the idea of someone hurting you, you might, you know, it might, or you hurting someone, let me rephrase that, the idea of hurting someone because they hurt you and you decide to put your hands on, and in reality, it sounds appealing. It sounds like something that, you know, we should do, but that doesn't mean you should act on those type of impulses, you know, but it's okay to honestly acknowledge them, you know, telling them what it is you want to do, you know, tell them how they're making you feel, tell them to the point where they pushed you. And showing your self-control. Because at that point, you're re it may not seem like it in the moment. But you're regaining a part of yourself back. By not allowing them to continue to control you, control you beyond the point of them saying that they want to walk away. Or that they're done with you or whatever it is. And listen, these are powerful emotions. You know, that, that, are, that can be very difficult to control for some people. You know, some people... Have never been taught self-control. Some people never learned how to control themselves. And so you have to be very, you have to be very delicate. And, and again, we're not talking about the person who did it. We're talking about the person that's receiving it. You have to be very conscious of not allowing that person to control you. Because here's the kick. If you go too far or put your hands on or do something stupid, you're going to jail. You're losing your home. You're losing your job, your car, whatever it is, right? And they're still going to be broke up with you. And they're still going to move on from you. So at what, what are you willing to risk to get something that's not ultimately what you want? Because once you finally settle down and stop allowing your angry mouth to speak for your hurt heart, you're going to realize that if they want to be gone, you can't keep them anyway. So you, sometimes you have to really think before you react. You know, you can't... Um, how do I say this? Um, you know, at some point where you must have to actively, you know, search for that line. You have to be willing to stay within your boundaries 
And you got to be able to compartmentalize. Sometimes getting away from it is a lot easier said than done. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do if you're looking at tomorrow and not just today. You, you can't have a stable relationship if you don't stay back from, you know, that thin boundary between these two feelings. So how can you tell if you're getting really close, you know, to that place where you're about to, you know, go past that point of no return? And that's when it gets interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me, interesting. These boundaries is more about the quality of the feeling than the intensity of them. You know, however, if you find yourself getting close to that boundary, your emotions can become extremely strong. And that's when you have to recognize the fact that you may be getting close to that point, or as we calling it, that line between loving them and hating them. Don't let people get you to the point of believing that just because you break up, you have to be enemies. There's a way to do everything. Because as long as you can forgive a person, you can move forward with your life. It ain't about forgiving them so that they can have a reason to come back. It's about forgiving them for yourself and taking away their control and regaining your power over your inner self. And that becomes very, um, very likely when you don't know when you're getting close to that line. And certainly, listen, listen, yes, you can feel intense love without feeling hate. You can feel intense hatred without having any more love. And it seems like they don't go hand in hand, but they do. Love and hate relationships go through this every single day. I can hate you. I can move on from you. I cannot have anything to do with you. And I used to once love you with everything in me. So that that line is, is, is I mean, it is thin. And you have to be prepared to understand, you know, what that means. And when you're nearly when you're nearing that edge and you you likely feel like both emotions are equally as strong at the same time you're going back back and forth. And then all of a sudden you start to feel like you start to dwell on that hurt. You have officially crossed that line. You have allowed another person to control your emotions. What is it going to cost you? Where is it going to take you? How far are you willing to go before you can't come back from it? It happens every single day. Some people are just emotionally unbalanced. They can carry on a conversation and they're, they're unstable. They can go through life and then all of a sudden you push a button and somebody's willing to give up everything that they have to demonstrate the hatred that they have for you. Love and hate are very closely related. So you have to be mindful and pay attention to the things you say, to the things you do to people and allowing other people to say and do to you. When you let someone see and hear their thoughts, your fears, and your weakness, it can create that potential for you to be deeply hurt by them. Because you're completely naked. They know everything about you. They know every button to push. They know how to bring you back. They know how to push you over. They know how to get you to that point. They know how to push you over that point. And whether it's an intentional jab or a careless phrase and comment, and it's a normal feeling to feel hurt by them because you're so far out of your element. When you feel a love that you've never felt before, it is so imperative that you start to find other things to occupy you, to occupy yourself, telling them no when they want so much of you, being willing to withdraw and back out of situations because what happens is it keeps you with some semblance of power, but also keeps you grounded, okay? You might start out wondering why, you know, they would want to hurt you that way, you know? If you keep, you know, reminiscing and, and thinking about it, you know, a small comment that can take on a significant importance or eventually turn into hatred, something so simple. But because you have, you started to settle in and dwell on that hurt, everything is now unbalanced for you. This is when you got to start communicating. Because remember, if you're in a healthy relationship, you should be able to talk about anything. 
You should be able to talk about your feelings. You should be able to talk about that love. You should be able to talk, talk about how close you've gotten to that line. But if it's a healthy relationship, they should also be willing to hear it and receive it. You know, because when you love a person, the littlest things can make you feel even more in love. And those same, you know, then sometimes even more than you can imagine. And this is part of the reason why that line is so thin. Because those little things can also turn into the biggest thing that pushes you to the point where you hate them. You know, then you're starting to get angry. You're starting to get jealous. You're starting to get out of your element. And once you start to get out of your element, you're, you're officially losing control. So we have to be very mindful of, you know what I'm saying? Because jealousy comes in. You know, like a combination of, of care and insecurity. It may start out like a deep, you know, a deep love or, you know, affection. But if you got low self-esteem, it'll convince you that, you know, you're not even feeling worthy of being loved by this person. Or that they're just playing games with you. Your mind can officially start paying tricks on you. And if you're in an unhealthy relationship, <laughs> you've crossed over this line so far at this point. There is no chance of coming back because right now the one person you've given everything to is trying to take everything from you in your head. doesn't make it true or false, but in your head, it is as true as the night is night is dark and the day is bright. You know what I'm saying? You begin to closely watch, you know, how they behave in each moment, especially when they start interacting with someone you know what I'm saying, that you might deem a competitor. You start to put yourself in a position where you think that every single thing, if they start laughing, they're talking about you. You know what I'm saying, they're smiling, then that means that they're flirting. Because this person, you deem them to be a competitor. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. But because you've already made them a competitor, your competition, now you're officially starting to go overboard. And when you feel jealous, most of the time you might begin to hate that person for not loving you exclusively. So you got to hear that, right? Because you have deemed the other person, you know, this, or you've deemed what they're doing that. When you start to get that jealousy within you, it starts to ignite a rage with you. And all of a sudden, now you're starting to watch everything that this person does. You know what I'm saying? And now you're saying that they're not loving you exclusively or... You felt like something else was going on that explains why they're doing this, they're doing that. So you're getting officially to that point where we're going to have some issues. And, we're, and again, we're pushing towards that line. You might find yourself trying to manipulate a situation to keep your, you know, saying your partner, whoever it is, away from that other person. You know, jealousy might seem like you love and care a lot. It seems that way. Only another toxic person views your jealousy as that. That's toxicity. That is being toxic. When you think that you being jealous proves that you love a person or care about a person more because you are. But at that point, you know what I'm saying, any feelings that you have for them, you know, are replaced by a desire of ownership. You're trying to own that person. Can't do this. Can't do that. You're trying to own everything about them. And if they resist your control, hatred follows. Hatred starts to follow. And at some point, you have to start valuing your own independence. You got to be willing to say, I deserve better. I am better. I'm going to be better. And you have to take yourself back. Sometimes you're like, you know what? Thank you. I get it. But no thank you. I take it that you're walking away. Let me help you go away. I don't need your closure. I don't need your finishing points. I don't need you to try to find a way to keep things stable between you and I so that one day you might be able to come back. You have to be willing to regain your own independence. And it's easy to find it's easy to fall into a codependent situation. You know, if there's someone there, you can find, you know what I'm saying, you can start to find your happiness within that person because they take care of your needs, they take care of you. But that right there, that dependency, that's an issue because your life is starting to revolve around this person. You start to do things differently with your family. 
with your friends, with your kids, taking care of yourself, your job becomes secondary. That relationship becomes your top priority. You have officially went so far off the deep end that you damn near going to be to a point of having to be committed. You get what I'm saying? It might seem like it's convenient and a helpful, you know, sign of love at first, but likely it isn't. Instead, it is often a sign of an unhealthy attachment. You know, it may seem like you're trying to be romantic and that y'all need each other so, you know what I'm saying, intense. But that is a sign of an unhealthy relationship. Because in a healthy relationship, each person strives to meet their own needs. In a healthy relationship, you are responsible for yourself, for your actions for your happiness, for your dependency, for your esteem. You're responsible for yourself. Your behavior is your responsibility and your responsibility only. So you must be very mindful of knowing the difference between being toxic and being in a healthy relationship, being in an unhealthy situation and being in a healthy situation. Because sometimes your mental needs you to stay in a, st in a stable place. But you also have to recognize that just because a person is great this, great that, great in bed, good cook, good family member, agree to all the things you want, right? You have to understand that if they're not in a good, stable place and the littlest thing set them off, that is a sign. That is what, as people call it now, a red flag that you have to be very mindful of. Because that love-hate relationship, as much as I love you, I equally hate you. Stay away from me, but don't be gone too long. You know what I'm saying? I'll bust the windows out your car, but baby, you know I love you. You know how I get sometimes. You are sending off all the red flags. If a person, I'm not going to say a man or woman, right? If a person says, if you cheat on me, I'm going to kill you. You need to hear that. Because a mentally stable person ain't giving up their freedom just because you decide to go freak some, with somebody else. Those are signs. When a person tells you that, you know what I'm saying, I'm not going to leave you, I'll just burn up all your clothes and expect you to come home, and they laugh about it, they're trying to tell you something. They're unbalanced. They're unstable. I don't give a shit how great she is at giving, you know, sex or whatever it is, right, that they may be good at. You better use your mind and get the hell out the way because I promise you, it doesn't get better from that statement forward. And if you decide to stay and you decide to cheat on this person, you can't be surprised. When they're chasing you around the parking lot with a screwdriver. So, you know, these are things that you really have to be, you know, mindful of. So be sure that you take care of your own individual basic needs whenever you can. You know, make your way in this world. You know, reach for the sun. You know, the highest human potential. Whatever it is your motivational speech is for yourself, you have to do that within. You know, go out your way to do things for yourself rather than automatically letting someone else do them for you. Because now you're entering into a territory of controlling. If they're doing everything for you, you're not doing anything for yourself. You're now exactly what we're talking about. You're being in a codependent relationship, and you are now being dependent on someone else for your gratification, for your needs, for your space. Learn to do things by yourself. Do not give up self for anyone. You have to allow yourself to be who you are and take what comes with it. This is for the giver and the receiver. Don't let a person control you or make they make you think that they need you so much that you can't even be by yourself because every time you turn around, you have to do something for them. Sometimes you got to tell them no. What that forces them to do is remain independent for themselves while also appreciating the dependency that they have for you. So you have to be mindful and, and skate that line because this line, it is so thin. Okay? Um, when you're in a relationship and it is based on a deep care, you know what I'm saying, no one needs. You know what I'm saying, you'll be closer to having a satisfying and possibly a passionate relationship. You know, you have to recognize your own truth, your own rights, your own responsibility in a relationship. You know, often in a, relationship, in a relationship, people fail to recognize our rights and responsibilities in that relationship. And I know it sounds so, 
political this or that, right? But in a relationship, you have rights. Don't don't let someone take away your rights. You have the right to not want to be with that person. You have the right to not want to break up. You have the right to fight for that relationship. I don't believe in forcing it. I don't believe in fighting it. If this is where you want to be, this is where you're going to be. And if you want to go, I can't stop you. It might suck, but I can't stop you. But that's also your right. Okay. But don't, 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 don't forget that rights also come with responsibility. You are responsible for how you treat people. You are responsible for your actions, your behavior. You're also responsible for the things that come out of your mouth that don't come out the way you intended it to. Because if you think before you speak and choose your words, then there shouldn't be no regrets on the words that you chose. Now, there is a difference between someone taking your words out of context and there's a difference between if I tell you I like you and then you turn around and tell me what I get from what you're trying to tell me is that you think I'm cute. See, no, I said I like you. Don't change my words. Those are not the same. I got the right for what I say to be what I mean. And you got the responsibility to hear what it is that I say and not try to make what I said what it is you wanted to hear. Rights and responsibility. Okay? It's easy to blame someone else. You know what I'm saying? When you don't separate what is, you know, saying yours to do and what is someone else's responsibility to do. You know what I'm saying? But by accepting your own responsibility, you take charge of it. And you have to also be mindful to let the other person take responsibility for themselves. You know what I'm saying? You give yourself the power at this point to affect change in your life. And relieve, and when you leave someone else's responsibility in their hands, you avoid the feelings of resentment because they're responsible for themselves. And, and, and that, that sounds so minor, so minute, right? But it is so imperative that everybody understands their role their rights, their truths, their responsibility. You know, you need to be clear about your rights too. You know what I'm saying? For instance, you have the right to feel safe in any relationship. It's the other person's responsibility to make you feel safe. It's also your right to want to walk away. It's the other person's responsibility to make it safe for you to choose that decision and say, I hear you, I don't like it, but I understand, thank you, and move on. Sounds easy enough, sounds simple, okay? You don't have the right to demand that your partner ask, you know what I'm saying, you before making the smallest, even the smallest decision. You don't have that right. It's not their responsibilities to fulfill, to fulfill the gap in your life of insecurities. Rights and responsibilities go both directions. People commonly have trouble understanding their rights and responsibilities because the environment that they grew up in was un was an unhealthy one. You know, if you feel that, you know, if that's the case, then, you know what I'm saying, hell, you might need to seek some therapy. We have to understand that people come from different backgrounds. People come from different places. People's understanding of love isn't the same. People's interpretation of rights and responsibilities aren't the same. People knowing how to treat you the right way or the wrong way may not be the same as yours. Some people are willing to learn. Some people are willing to just go along with it. And some people are willing to just play like they don't know anything. But love and hate, that line is so thin. People often mistaken love for a strong life. If you're telling the person that you love them after six months, you're lying. I don't care how strongly you feel about somebody. That's not love because you don't know them. I don't care if you're with each other every single day. You're still going to be learning something every single day. When you like someone, it's easy to walk away from. When you love someone, it becomes difficult to walk away from. Be careful with the, cho the words that you choose. Because you may think you love a person. And they may tell you that they think 
they love you too. And so when that happens, this is when we have to be mindful of the fact that this person sees things one way and then all of a sudden you realize they can't cook or they don't clean. You know, they're always in between jobs. They can't keep it in their pants. They can't keep their legs closed. Now, what you thought was love, you're starting to realize, I barely like this person. I barely know this person. And so now you've changed your mind. This person perceives it as, you know, saying, you, you, you started to feel this way because I didn't, you know, do this or I didn't do that. And if you say you love me, you wouldn't do this to me. You never loved them in the first place. You love the idea of being with someone and being in their relationship and what they had to offer, but not that person. You have to be mindful that that line from hatred to love, from love to hatred, is so minute, so small, so thin. That a person that loves you yesterday is willing to run you over with a car today. They're willing to destroy your career. They're willing to set your clothes on fire. They're willing to beat up the next guy you want to talk to. They're willing to stalk you so much to the point where you have to leave a city to go somewhere else. But the sad part about this is, is all these things that this person is doing, they've already demonstrated to you that they were capable of it. You just dismissed it. You pretended like, you know, that's just crazy. Man, whatever. I ain't hearing that. You don't know how far a person is willing to go. And I promise you, if you've never seen the movie, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate, go check it out. But for those, for those of us old heads who have seen the movie, you know just how quickly that situation turned. You know just how badly that situation got. You know where that situation ended up. So stop being so quick to be in your feelings talking about love. Because most times we don't ask, do you hate someone? What does that hatred towards that person look like? What did they do to get to the place of hatred? Asking questions. Because again, that line is so thin. And just because you may be mentally stable doesn't mean that they are when it comes to matters of the heart, matters of the family. You get into an argument, all of a sudden they're talking about your family, they're talking about your kids, they're talking about people you love, they're talking about things that you care deeply about. They're trying to push you to that point where you can feel the way they feel. They want you to hurt the way that they hurt. You can take a person who is mentally stable, who doesn't do this, who doesn't do that, and just because the relationship ended or just because whatever happened, all of a sudden they're now someone else, a person you don't recognize. The reason why you don't recognize them because you had your rose-colored glasses on while they had tint on the inside of theirs. That darkness still shined bright within them because, again, that line is so thin between love and hate. Being responsible for ourselves is the most delicate balance in life that any of us can have. And a lot of us give it up so easily. A lot of us pretend like to be in this relationship, I have to be willing to give up any and everything just to make this person happy. Don't give up self. It's okay to compromise. It's okay to bend a little. It's okay to flex, but don't allow the love, the passion that you may or may not have for someone be the reason why you end up in jail. You end up with a, a, a knife in the tire, sugar in the gas tank, a car spray payment, because that gives them that person that moment of satisfaction. But in reality, they know that they screwed up. Mentally unstable people don't even realize that. So, it's a heavy topic, but it's a topic that brings everything into, spe into spectrum about the season that we've had. 
the ultimate sacrifice? What are you willing to give up to get everything you want? Single fathers. We get that way for a reason. Some we can explain. Some we can't. Family legacy. Building something so that when your time comes, the people behind you can also continue to build on it. Healthy relationships. All of this that we're talking about, right? They all come down to a thin line between love and hate. You think about a sacrifice, right? You love a person enough to be with them. You have to love them enough to let them go. Just because you're a single father don't mean you have to be stupid for a child. A thin line between love and hate. I can love you up close and I can love you from afar. I can love you in the same city and I can love you from afar. I can love you in another state and I can love you close to me. But what I cannot and what I will not is allow you to jeopardize my freedom. To take me to a place that I cannot return from. We give up so much to be in a relationship. Don't give up your freedom. Don't give up your individuality. Don't give up your passion. Don't give up your love. Don't give up the things that you want to do in life just to demonstrate to someone else that you love them to the level that they want you to love. Maybe that's not the person for you. And what happens is you sacrifice so much to make them happy. Normally the person that you do all the sacrificing for is a person who walks away. That's the person that throws their hands up. Because remember, they have nothing else invested. You're the only one with everything invested. You have to be willing to put in what you get out. You have to be willing to get out what you put in. Again, a thin line between love and hate. We've talked about a lot. We've talked about a lot this season. We've answered some questions. We've done a lot. But a thin line between love and hate, most people know it as being in a toxic relationship or a healthy relationship. Some people know it as being in a situationship. Some people call it baby mama, baby daddy drama. But you're at that place where it's called a thin line between love and hate. It happens in every type of ship, friendships. Two friends like each other today. But because somebody says something overnight, tomorrow I hate him or I hate her. Partnerships. We were doing good. You made a decision without me. You don't trust me. I can't mess with you no more. I hate you because you destroyed the business. Relationships. You cheated. I think you cheated. I know you cheated. I didn't get this. I didn't get that. I love you, but now I hate you. I'm going to burn up your clothes. I'm going to light your car on fire. I'm going to do all this different crap. People nowadays are so comfortable being toxic that they don't even know how to be in a healthy relationship. And these are the type of people you have to stay away from. You have to stay out of relationships with because these people will bring you down to their level and leave you there. Pigs are comfortable in the mud. So when you get in the mud, they are just the happiest with you because you're now down to their level. They don't want to be clean. They like being dirty. They like being grimy. Understanding the person's background, where they're from, those insecurities, what are they, asking questions, dating properly. All of these things keep you on the positive side between love and hate. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being completely in love, 10 being complete hatred, stay closer to number 3. Stay away from number 8 because that's when... You sacrifice everything to get absolutely nothing in return. Your gratification is whatever it is you do, that gratification on that hatred side is only temporarily. For some people, some people it fuels them to just keep going and doing even more stupid crap. So again, mindful and thinking about the things that we do. I don't want to waste any more of your time. I want to say thank you to everybody for this season. I want to say thank you to our sponsor that we had in the beginning of the season. I want to say thank you to our listeners that got the giveaway, the $250 that we did at the beginning of the season. 
we're going to be doing more. Next season, we're going to be going live. Next season, we're going to be pushing more towards YouTube versus the streaming platform. We're going to make this as convenient. We're going to make this as interactive, as personal as possible. Shenanigans will continue. They may not be every single day, but they will continue over the next month. We're going to come back the Monday after Father's Day. We're going to start out with me giving love to the men. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk to different men. We're going to do whatever it is we got to do. The dblpodcast.wordpress.com is the website. The dbl underscore um, podcast underscore is the TikTok. The dbl podcast on Instagram. Marcus Aurelius on Facebook. YouTube, the DBL podcast. Check us out. Episodes are going to be up there forever, I guess. I won't take them down. They will be there. We all go through different things in life. Stay away from that line between love and hate. I want to say for the last time this season, thank you to everybody.